My name is Justin Ward. I'm a lecturer in optimization and operations research in the School of Mathematical Sciences. So I am Dr. Alex Fink. I'm a senior lecturer here in the School of Mathematical Sciences at Queen Mary. I am Ginesta Bianconi. I'm a reader in applied mathematics. I'm John Moriarty and I'm a professor of mathematics here at Queen Mary University of London. I am Silvia Liverani. I am a statistician. So I do research in theoretical computer science, in particular in optimization, combinatorial optimization problems, which are problems where uh, you have to combine things like discrete indivisible objects in, you know, to get some structure that satisfies certain properties. And you've also got a notion of how valuable, say, this structure is, and you want to get the best one. So like you want to get the, the cheapest network that connects a, a bunch of cities together or um, the, the fastest route from one point to another or something like that. I do research that spans the boundaries between algebra and geometry and combinatorics, discrete math. Tropical geometry and tropical mathematics in general is based on transforming the familiar mathematics by replacing the operations. Instead of addition, in tropical geometry, you use the maximum or the minimum. Instead of multiplication, we use addition. And the effect of this is to take maybe the solutions to an equation which forms some curvy surface, which is difficult to understand, and it transforms it into a structure made of straight, flat pieces, and then we can use techniques of discrete mathematics to understand it better. Networks are everywhere, and you find them from the financial market to brain networks and uh, network science addresses questions related to the structure of this network and uh, the function of this network. I focus mostly on the mathematical aspect because there are many fundamental questions that can be asked about network and actually when you understand uh, the network theory, then you are able also to apply this tool also to a large, much larger variety of, uh, of, of problems. I am an applied probabilist, so I study applications of mathematical probability theory. Um, and at the moment I'm focusing on applications to do with uh, energy problems, which is um, one of the main societal challenges around the world. Statistics is a branch of mathematics which is concerned with the collection, analysis and interpretation of data. One aspect of my research uh, concerns the study of uh, spatial temporal uh, models for epidemiology. So spatial temporal models arise when you have data collected over time and over space. Um, and in particular, my work in the area has related to the study of pollution and how that might affect our health, for example, uh, cardiovascular diseases or respiratory diseases. And it is well known that pollution has a negative effect on our health, but how and where and predicting where it might happen and um, developing uh, public policies to address that is what the work is about. So what we can do with some of the algorithms I study is we won't give you the best possible solution, but I'll give you a solution and I absolutely promise and can prove beyond a doubt that it's never more than say 150% or as expensive as the optimal. So if you, do, if you do a Google search for cat or bear or just animals, how do you decide say which 10 images best convey to the user what is an animal. You, want to, you can think about picking the best, say, 10 images as a clustering problem, where you want to cluster the images into groups, and each of the 10 things you show the user, this is like the representative from that group. One area where tropical methods can be applied is in mathematical biology, in phylogenetics, which is reconstructing the evolutionary history of a set of species. Another application of tropical geometry uh, maybe the first large-scale one, it's a fairly new area, uh, took place in the Netherlands in the 70s. Uh, it was used to design the railway timetable. Uh, the uh, task 
in railway timetabling is that delays can propagate. You know, if anything is delayed at one o'clock, then everything that was trying to use the same line will be delayed at two o'clock. And so you want to build in uh, some leeway in the timetable so that when something runs late, uh, there is room to move other services in and, and remove the delays. And tropical geometry provides a, a very good method to do this. You have to compare minimum of this thing to maximum of this thing, and it forms a tropical optimization problem very naturally. And so I understand that the Netherlands used this to make some of their national rail schedules in the 70s. So it's an exciting time to be a probabilist working on energy problems because around the world we are trying to decarbonize our energy supply. And that means we're relying more and more on sources of, of energy which are very variable and, and quite unpredictable, uh, driven by the elements essentially. I'm very interested in network geometry. Uh, if you think of the brain, it has an architecture and a geometry which is discrete, is, is formed by nodes and links. And actually, um, the role of geometry in, discrete, in this discrete structure can be very strong. It is very important to take a multi-layer perspective in order to understand economics because, for instance, you can have one infrastructure, for instance, the internet, and you might believe that e-commerce is a benefit of having uh, the internet, but actually you will not be able to benefit from, from e-commerce if there is not only another layer, mainly the transportation network, the School of Maths at Queen Mary is a great place to work, it's a great place to teach. We've got lots of talented uh, researchers here. I love the chance to do research because the problems are just compelling. They get a hold of me and, and they don't let go. In the past 10 years it has been so exciting to um, do statistics. There is so much power and promise in all the data that has become available and the big data that has become available and uh, through governments and businesses. However, data is only a partial representation of the true information that we're interested in. And we need to be clear in how we analyze it and clever on how we analyze it. But that is the exciting part of this job. I get to spend half of my time looking at beautiful things, discovering beautiful things, creating beautiful things, and then the other half uh, teaching people about beautiful things, showing people beautiful things. So it's like the best of both worlds for me. It's a really great job.